The battle over money in China is going global. Recently, scores of Chinese companies filed applications in New York's court for recognition and enforcement of Chinese court-issued judgments in the United States. From banks seeking loan repayments to claims against insurance companies, Chinese are bringing their legal battles involving hundreds of millions of yuan to the United States. But should U.S. courts recognize and enforce judgments issued by the courts in Communist China? And on what basis could they make that decision? Hello, welcome to my show. I'm Lei. After a decade of capital flight, many wealthy Chinese, including government officials, have moved assets overseas. Chinese court officials who have sent their assets and families overseas, naked officials, because they have stripped themselves of everything they own. So Chinese legal cases involving delinquent loans and faulty insurance claims have followed the trajectory of capital flight and landed in New York. A case involving a defaulted bank loan was filed on June 28th in Manhattan's civil court. A Shenzhen-based firm that acquired China Guangfa Bank's claim for loan repayments asked the New York court to confirm a judgment rendered by a Shanghai Intermediate Court in 2014. The case was against a Shanghai High Sea International Trading Company over a delinquent loan repayment of nearly 400 million renminbi. On August 28, 2012, defendant Hai Si entered into a credit line agreement with the Shanghai branch of China Guangfa Bank. From August 12 to the 16th, 2013, Hai Si received 571 million yuan worth of loan payments from the bank in 54 separate drafts. Hai Si repaid 171 million back to the bank before breaching the loan agreement, leaving an unpaid balance of 397 million. The bank brought the matter to court. A Shanghai court issued a judgment on September 25, 2014, and ordered Hai Si to pay the outstanding loan balance with interest and legal fees, totaling 443 million renminbi. The defendant later declared bankruptcy. In 2020, the bank transferred its rights to claiming the loan to an asset company in Shanghai. Three months later, the right to claim the debt was transferred to Yipiao, the company that filed the case in New York. Yipiao is seeking payment of the outstanding loan, which has grown to 582 million renminbi, with an 18.25% interest. Now, another case that was filed recently is a dispute between Hong Kong-based White Periwinkle Shipping, Chongqing-based Red Dragonfly Oil Company, and the oil company's insurance company. The 2011 dispute involves a few entangled legal cases over falsely claimed damaged shipment of 65,000 metric tons of Brazilian soybeans to China. The oil company sued the shipping company in a Chinese court, and the shipping company sued the oil company and the insurance company in the United Kingdom. In 2018, the Hong Kong shipping company was awarded $4 million by the UK court. The shipping company filed in a New York court for recognition and enforcement of the UK judgment. Why do Chinese ask a New York court to confirm and validate court verdicts in China and the United Kingdom? It's because the defendants have assets outside China, and all major financial institutions have a branch in New York. New York is a great starting point for Chinese creditors to track the assets of their debtors. In the case of the Hong Kong Shipping Company, its legal document stated that the defendant, which is China Pacific Property Insurance Company, owns $17 million worth of stocks of a company that's listed on the NASDAQ. The plaintiffs are not seeking a new judgment, but are asking the court to recognize a foreign money judgment under the summary judgment in lieu of complaint procedure. Once a Chinese judgment is converted to a New York summary judgment, the plaintiff can use the post-judgment discovery process to subpoena bank records, third-party witnesses, and take depositions. The legal basis of these cases is the Uniform Recognition of Foreign Money Judgments Act of 1962, enacted by the Uniform State Law Commission of the United States and New York State Civil Enforcement Statute. 
But foreign court judgments may not be recognized and enforced in the United States if they were obtained by fraud or based on causes of action that are contrary to the judicial principles of the United States, such as the lack of impartial tribunals and improper trial procedures. The Shanghai Bank case argued in its legal papers that the courts in the People's Republic of China, or PRC, are impartial and the civil laws of the PRC are administered by a fair system that provides impartial tribunals and employs impartial procedures. But is the Chinese legal system really impartial and fair? I think many would disagree. Should the plaintiffs be punished by the lack of judicial independence in Chinese courts? There are currently two court decisions in New York State that are good references. The first case is from January 2020, when the New York District Court of Queens recognized the verdict by Guangdong Provincial Court of Zhuhai in a debt repayment case. But the defendant appealed in the New York Supreme Court, arguing, among other things, that the U.S. State Department's 2018 Human Rights Reports amply demonstrate that the Chinese legal system does not meet U.S. due process requirements. The case is still on appeal. The second case is from April 2021, when the Manhattan District Court in New York refused to recognize and enforce the judgment by a Beijing High Court involving a Shanghai investment company and a Chinese venture capital firm for reasons related to the Chinese judicial system lacking judicial independence and due process. Judge Arthur Ingram began the preamble to his decision by quoting Winston Churchill's Veterans Day speech on November 11, 1947. Many forms of government have been tried and will be tried in the world of sin and woe. No one pretends that democracy is perfect or all-wise. Indeed, it has been said that democracy is the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. Judge Ingram devoted seven pages to support the argument that the legal procedures in China as a whole do not meet the requirements of the due process in the United States, and he therefore did not recognize the decision of the Chinese court. However, on March 10th of this year, the New York State Court of Appeals reversed Judge Ingram's decision, holding that the court should not use the U.S. State Department's human rights reports as the basis to discuss China's judicial system. The case is currently still on appeal. A key point of contention is whether the U.S. State Department's human rights reports on China are relevant in the decision. The plaintiff argues that the reports focus on political prisoners and criminal prosecutions of human rights activists rather than on civil litigation. The judge believes, however, that the State Department's report constitute documentary evidence and their veracity is undisputed. If the plaintiffs are true victims of financial fraud in China and the Chinese court ruled justly in their favor, they should not be deprived of the chance to seek justice in the United States because of the CCP's lack of judicial independence. But if the plaintiffs were unfairly awarded because they have special connections to the court or the judge, then they should be denied confirmation and enforcement in the U.S. I think there are cases of both scenarios. But how would an American judge know which scenario it is? It is very difficult. I once said that China's problem is everyone's problems now. That's what I meant. I think we'll see more cases like these in the future. That's all for today. I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.